Hello everyone and welcome back to another devlog about my city building game. Still nameless city building game that I am developing with Rust and Bevy. There is still no name, there is still no logo, so let's just focus on the things that are here. There is, finally, terrain generation. There are different terrains in the game. Goodbye boring green square, welcome rivers and islands and lakes and seas and mountains. I hope to make this video a bit more technical. I wanna show how I implemented procedural terrain generation in Bevy with some code examples. Some people might say that terrain generation is not that important for city builder. And yeah, I definitely have more important things to add to the gameplay, but I just got tired of looking at the same scene over and over again. When I imagine city, I see places like Porto, or Rome, or Rio, or Bern, and when I look at my game and there is a, just a green square, it's, it just makes me sad. So previously, I used default Bevy Mesh for the plane, and now I used it again. Since Bevy's version 0.10, the plane now has subdivisions parameter that allows us to increase number of vertices in the mesh. Before that, plane had only 4 vertices, so it didn't leave much room for transforming it. Now the plane has virtually unlimited amount of vertices, which means it can be transformed in many more ways. Here you can see the comparison of the wireframes for 0, 50 and 900 subdivisions. This is generate plane function that is very close to what I use in the game. It first creates the new mesh, then it extracts attribute position of all vertices and converts them into the vector. When I initialize a noise generation function, here is for example Perlin noise, luckily someone already created a crate called noises with various noise generations algorithms, so I don't have to implement it myself. Thank you very much for that. Then for each vertex we provide coordinates to the noise function, so that would output the height value for us. Height will always be the same for the position and the seed. There is also additional step of adding the color dependent on the height of the vertex, just because it's really hard to see the result if there is no color differences at all. And that's the result. The plane is surely not flat anymore, but good luck building a city on that. Luckily, there is plenty of parameters we can adjust. The most obvious one will be the noise function. There are lots of them, and we can also adjust the scale of the noise. It is quite overwhelming in the beginning, and it takes a while to go through all those parameters and learn exactly what they do. The best way I found is basically a trial and error. I even developed this in-game console that would easily allow me to regenerate the terrain with new parameters, and then I mindlessly kept switching them till I found something. Noise. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> anyway, after we found our noise and scale and seeds that we are happy with, we can also add an easing function. And again, there is infinite amount of them and they can impact the terrain in different ways. In theory, there is unlimited amount of combinations that we can have and it's almost impossible to check all of them. So I basically went with this is good enough and that there will never be a perfect terrain. There always can be something better. Although, this is close to perfection. One more obvious issue is that it's quite hard from the development standpoint to make a city builder game on such uneven terrain. Like with all the variety, I will still need a large amount of flat terrain to be able to put streets and buildings on it. That's why I introduced one more part of the pipeline and these are terraces. Basically all vertices within certain range will get a set value. In this example, all vertices between minus 100 and 5 will receive 0, and all vertices between 5 and 200 will get 10. There is also some padding in between, to make the transition between those two levels smoother. Let's see how the terrain looks now after adding the terraces. Now, this looks more like a place that you can build a city on. Let me show you my favorite maps that I created so far. This is just a simple Greenland with the river in between. This one looks like a rocky island in the middle of the sea, or it looks like a pancake. But once you see the pancake, there is no going back. It will always be the pancake to you. This is just a rocky desert plain with the sea on one side. There is another green terrain with two rivers now. And another green terrain with even more rivers. 
So yeah, uh, mostly rivers. All right, so with terrains done, I guess it's time now to go back to building actual cities. Oh no, 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 don't, don't go there. I don't go, there is water now. Uh, ap apparently the cars are not familiar with this. It's it's new terrain system. You, you can go there. Don't don't go there. I didn't. I, I forgot to mention. No. Ah. Well, I knew I forgot something. Maybe if I remove the road. Damn. Where, where is the remove tool? I need to remove the road. Let's remove the road. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this should stop them. Hello again everyone, I have implemented bridges, so the citizens of the city will now be able to cross the river without drowning. Let me show you. Uh, yeah, but let's put the bridge and... Okay guys, now it should be fine. I added bridge analyzer that stretches the bridge to fit the terrain. Ah, How is that possible? Okay, we are back now and I am able to spawn the road on the bridge and cars can finally go to the other side of the city. So now the bridge is the most advanced game object in the game, as not only it serves as a base for roads, but it also modifies the grid data underneath. Previously the height of the water tiles without bridge was zero, but after spawning the bridge, the height of the tiles matches the level the bridge is joined to. On this river map we can see how bridges adjust their length to match the river size. I can put one bridge here and another here and they all seem to work. There is obviously the limit for how long the bridge can be. Oh, and... oh! Well, th that, that is not by design. Does it work? Uh, it does work. Uh, so I think I just invented the uh, freeway bridge, I guess? Uh, I wonder if someone came up with this before. Well, I'm going to end this video here with this surprising piece of genius engineering. I hope you found this video fun or interesting. If you liked it, please click on subscribe button as I plan to make more of them. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Goodbye.